three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Anderson. Anderson, and you're watching freaking Jiggy Jag TV. Loud and proud, it's Jiggy Jaguar from JiggyJaguar.com. Thank you. Good night. Got silverback gorilla strength. Right, yeah, yeah, he yeah, got yeah, silverback yeah, gorilla yeah, strength. Like that, hey, like that dude on the bus that had that fight, that old dude yeah, that rocked. That'd that be guy. him right there. Yeah, yeah that'd that'd old man right strength, there. that yeah. one punch. He got that gorilla strength, man. Cheeky Jag TV, KJagRadio.com, here with uh, Melvin Galar. What's going on, sir? That's how you doing. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about how everything went down tonight. It went down exactly how I planned it. You know, um, I sat in the back and. I called first round knockout, and that's what I went in and did. You know, I, ha I had to get in and jump on him quick. Um, you know, Rickles, to me, he's one of those guys, if you let him get his rhythm, and he'll build his confidence. I mean, and on top of that, he had a whole crowd to help him with his confidence. It's so, like Thunderdome. Pretty much. Two men into one man. That's my shit. That's my shit, man. The only thing, I didn't have a Tina Turner sit down. There you go. Now, uh, with, with cutting weight, and you've been doing this since wrestling days. Yeah. Yeah. You're sick of this. <laughs> I want to have fun, man. I, I want to make money, but I want to also have fun. You know, this, this, this to me was my childhood dream. You know, I'm actually yeah. living my dream. So it's not like most people go to work every day and they hate their fucking job. They hate their life, but they have to make a living. Yeah. For me, I love my job. I love my life. And if I lose this, I lose everything. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't want to go be a normal person working a regular job every day. You know, this, this is what I chose to do at the age of 13. And everybody even, I mean, I even went to freaking, I even had to go to counseling in high school and middle school because when everybody wanted to be cops and lawyers, I said I wanted to be a UFC fighter. And lo and behold, man, they had me in counseling as a kid. <laughs> like, I was in anger management as a kid. Like, I went through a lot of hell, man, just to be, just for my profession. And it's crazy now because all the people that thought I was crazy was like, man. I'm watching you on TV. We didn't know, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't think that you was taking this for real. Like, yes, when I was a kid, they said I wanted to be an MMA fighter. This is what I want to do for a living, and I'm happy with what I do, but I, I can't let somebody take that away from me. That's awesome. A couple questions for you. Yes, sir. What, sir, who walking behind me? Um. Hey, man, I'm from the South, man. <laughs> Southern hospitality dictates. I always say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Now, uh, being My a mom student. and them watching this. <laughs> being a student of MMA, um, watching everything from UFC, Bellator, everything, being a fan of this sport, why don't people do leg locks anymore? Man, you know what? I have no idea. I, I was never a submission guy, but I mean that's a good question. But I mean, look at what happened to Paul Harris when he did his leg lock. They actually they actually kicked him out of the UFC. So, I mean, it's part of the sport. But now they make it, they frown upon it like as if, oh, it's it's too dangerous. Man, look, when I first started doing MMA, there was no gloves and no weight classes. That's how right. long I've been doing this. You know, and I'm Back only, 30, when it was and I'm only 33. I'm still young for my age. I was really doing it when there were no rules. You know, Paul Harris come along, he's great at leg locks, he start leg locking guys, blowing their knees out. Next thing I know, he loses his job. I think it's bullshit. I call bullshit on it. I feel if you're strong at something, that's like saying if a striker's strong at throwing a good right hand, you're gonna take that away from him. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think a lot of integrity of the sport has been compromised over the past few years. I, I honestly thought it was a lot safer when it was no rules. Yeah. Because it was easier to stop fights, and most yeah. guys will quit before the fight can even happen, you know. So, I don't know, giving it rules, I, kind of, I think it kind of compromised the sport a little bit. Well, before we let you go, what's next for you? Go Man, up hopefully, uh, I'm everything. brought back up to 170. Uh, hopefully they get me a fight here sometime between now and September. You know, I want to get in early. Uh, hopefully I can get Paul Daly, you know, like I told other guys. Me and Paul are good friends. We've always been friends for a long time. I like him, he like me. But that's one fucking fight we can sell and we can have fireworks, you know what I'm saying? And I know everybody, like, that's a main event fight, you know what I mean? And I think the winner, the winner of that fight could definitely get a title shot. Well, good stuff. Nice to meet you. Good that's stuff, good. brother. Thanks for watching. So, can I get a photo with you yeah, real quick? Yeah, let's do it, man. Photo See, Bob's going to take the picture with well, you. Well, yeah, and you uh, can right. get one, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I bring my photographer with me everywhere I go. Smart man. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. Okay, gotcha. jump in there. All right. Come on, boss. Visible proof that I was here. All right. <laughs> I'm like, hey, a, I'm like a Yeti, though. Like <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right, see ya. No doubt. Nice, nice. Thank you so much, brother. Nice and stuff.